Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India morning and welcome to the course introduction to interaction design. So, in the previous uh, uh, session we had uh, discussed the user interface design. In today's uh, lecture we will be discussing the elements of user interface. So, now user interface is composed of several elements that uh, help the user communicate with the uh, interface. So, now, they help uh, uh, the interaction between the user and the system and we can consider them, uh, them to be the building blocks of the uh, uh, visual and interactive components. So, they are helpful in several ways. So, they allow us uh, improve communication, they help us with the usability uh, factor and uh, they allow us the uh, affordance like we discussed last time that uh, based on what they appear like we know that what is to be done with them. At the same time the visual hierarchy has to be maintained and the branding and aesthetics and the accessibility criteria. So, all of these things are uh, possible when we uh, use the elements in the interface and uh, we saw in the last lecture also that how the layout for example, needs to be worked out. So, that the elements can be placed so that they form um, sort of a story which has a cohesiveness. It is not something which has uh, no uh, connection. So, the uh, importance of the uh, UI components like we can see here several of them listed button, menu, icons and all. So, it lies in their ability to provide clear and intuitive uh, input. So, they uh, allow the user to set preferences, make choices and uh, they also control the behavior of an application or the website. So, at the same time they also contribute to the overall usability of the interface by providing the visual feedback to the user. So, the user uh, knows that uh, if this action is uh, performed then what is going to be the output of it. Now, uh, one of the components uh, here is the menu. So, we all are familiar with the menu uh, bar. So, the menu is a set of options just like in a restaurant the menu gives a lot of food options. So, here also in the interface the menu gives us several options and uh, so now uh, those options which are required to perform some kind of a function. So, uh, for operate, uh, operating systems like windows or uh, the, the mac uh, operating system. So, we have these uh, in both, but how are they presented or how are they accessed? So, that might be slightly different. So, in speech recognition and on the websites also we see these uh, menus and uh, so here we can see that how uh, when we go to this menu then we get several of these options. So, it guides the user in fulfilling a certain function. Now, there are several types of uh, different uh, menus. So, one is a pop up menu. So, it is hidden until we uh, right click and uh, then it provides us with the con uh, contextual options. Then the next is the graphical uh, uh, drop down uh, menu. So, when we click on it the item reveals the uh, options that are there. Then we have the cascading menu. So, which have some menus and uh, underneath them. So, that we can choose the function closest to our requirement. Then we have pull down menus. So, the items drop down when the menu title is clicked and the moving bar menu where the users navigate options by moving a highlighted bar 
and also the tear off menus that can be moved within the window for the convenience of the user. So, these are the different types of menus that the interface can have and uh, as we discussed in the previous lecture that there has to be something uh, binding in the overall uh, interface. So, one has to be very clear that which type of menu are we using because if the user gets used to say for example, the cascading menu then where is it the most useful, for what purpose is it the most useful and what uh, is uh, how and where is the tear uh, of menu most uh, applicable. So, we want to for example, get a larger uh, screen to work on, so we can move the uh, menu around. So, in certain situations one of these will be more suitable, so we have to identify the application of, the, of that. So, uh, now drop down lists, uh, so they have four main uh, items, so one is the container box, then we have an arrow, so we can see this is the container box, then we have the arrow which is here and then list of items and then a label. So, generally this particular type of uh, interaction this uh, drop down allows one to choose only one option. So, this is very common when we are selecting the country or the state. So, then all these uh, states uh, appear alphabetically and then we uh, move uh, down and select whatever state it is we want to choose. So, when the arrow is clicked, so uh, the screen or the options they remain visible to us, so that we can make our uh, choice and select the appropriate option out of the others. So, now uh, buttons uh, help us achieve the action, so uh, something needs to be pressed or pulled or dragged, some action has to happen, so that the user is able to interact more effectively and gets their work done. So, now there are different types of uh, uh, buttons in a uh, interface. So, we have uh, a call to action uh, button. So, a call to action uh, button is an interactive element of a user interface. So, that uh, aims at encouraging the user to take a certain action. So, for example, we can see three examples on this screen here. So, in the first one, uh, if you notice that uh, this is for the lift uh, application and here we can see that the first topmost thing is enter mobile number and apply to uh, drive. So, here if you see apply to drive appears first and sign up appears second, but in this one here sign up appears first and I have an account or login appears second. So, what could be the reason for this particular uh, such difference in the way these two are appearing. So, why it is like that is that in the second one which is the head space, so they are looking for more people to sign up. So, uh, they probably do not have enough people uh, already who are using this particular application. So, they are providing the sign up as the first option. So, the minute the fund somebody lands on their application they sign up. Whereas, the lift they already have a substantial number of you know uh, followers or users, so where they will apply to uh, drive directly. So, that is one slight uh, you can see that how the slight variation in which button appears first uh, really changes the way one interacts with it. Then here in the third one we can see that how this particular application is providing some kind of an incentive that you know you will get some points based on your purchase or whatever it may be early bird check in. So, so it is another way of uh, sort of enticing the user and uh, so, so a call to action button uh, will, will uh, expect the user to take some action. So, either sign up, uh, apply to drive or uh, log in and earn some points. So, uh, the next type of buttons are the text buttons. So, text buttons are of uh, two types. So, one is primary and the other is secondary. Now, 
some of the functions that the primary buttons have is for say registering or uh, if uh, we want the user to buy something or uh, say sending something, sending or pressing uh, the send button and the secondary buttons are usually used for cancelling or skipping or uh, another uh, similar function like say I want to decline something, so declining. So, you may uh, have noticed that whenever uh, some ad pops in or something then we uh, either uh, you know how the yes and skip buttons are placed, sometimes the skip button is not visible. So, but because that is a secondary button maybe the uh, developer, the designer wants the user to spend time there and not skip immediately because the information may be of use to the uh, user. So, uh, but there has to be certain difference between the primary button and the secondary button so that we can differentiate and not click the incorrect button. So, uh, next we come to the icons. So, icons are small uh, graphical uh, representations. Now, we are familiar with icons that they represent something that we are familiar with. So, icons we relate to them because either we already associate them with something existing or over time we learn that this stands for this particular thing. So, for example, if uh, you see this lock here. So, this looks almost exactly like of course, it is not an image of it, but this resembles a lock. So, we know that what a look, uh, lock looks like when it is locked and when it is unlocked. So, when it is locked uh, the this will be complete and when it is unlocked this gap will be created right. But for example, the red light that we see the red, yellow and green. So, that is something that we had to learn that red stands for stop, orange stands for uh, get ready and green stands for go. And so, now we have sort of incorporated that understanding into our life. So, we associate red with red and orange and green with uh, stop, uh, wait and go. So, uh, some of the things are uh, learned and some are something that we uh, relate with. So, for example, even the uh, floppy sign which is used for saving to save something. So, uh, probably a uh, lot of younger people have not even seen a floppy, but still we know that when we see that uh, symbol that particular icon we know that we can save our things or for example, a simple uh, this makes a person or a simple uh, heart shape talks about uh, heart right. So, now there are uh, uh, 5 types of these uh, icons we can break them into 5 types one is the resemblance. Uh, icons so which resemble something like the lock, this person or the heart. Then the uh, reference icons, so they define an uh, object or an action through an uh, analogy and uh, they fall under the category of this uh, reference icons. So, uh, we can see some plant, we see some alphabet and the uh, you know this uh, bubble of speech is there. So, we form an analogy there. The next is the arbitrary icons. So, arbitrary icons are which really have no connection uh, for example, the red light. So, it is an example of an arbitrary icon, uh, but now we have learned to associate it with uh, the different three steps that one should take. Then we have the flat and uh, semi flat icons. So, they are minimalistic and they are in the 2D uh, category uh, of icons. Uh, then uh, finally, we have the skeuomorphic. Skeuomorphic icons. So, uh, these are designed to provide a more natural and 3D effect on this interface and they are uh, the skeuomorphic icons. So, maybe uh, probably you can go back and just uh, look around you the different icons and try to categorize them under these categories. So, I will just write them here.
flat and semi flat and fifth is the skeuomorphic. So, maybe you can just go back take a look around some of the icons that you use on daily basis and try to categorize them under these. Now, progress indicators and uh, meters. So, uh, of course, when we are interacting with the system there is some uh, sort of a progress that we are trying to achieve some uh, progress we are making whether it is only loading of a page or whether it is some action that we are doing. So, now there are uh, two ways in which uh, it is uh, uh, we can see it. So, one is the linear and circular. So, here you can see that this is the linear and this is the circular way of showing the progress. So, here also these are also some examples of the circular. So, we see the circle uh, sort of flickering around the screen. So, we know that something is loading, something is coming up right or we see a line which is now getting darker and darker and darker. So, it is filling up the entire space. So, we know that only this much is left and then my documents will be uploaded in my hard drive. So, these are two broad ways in which we see the progress and then the determinate and the indeterminate. So, this is the determinate here and the indeterminate. So, determinate uh, it shows basically that for a process to complete how long will it take. So, we have the uh, start to finish. So, we know that we have to wait till this line reaches the finish. So, it is not an indefinite uh, line which uh, we do not know where will it stop. So, it tells the user that okay, so we can assume that 80 percent is done or 90 is done. So, that is the uh, determinate and indeterminate. So, in our work uh, when we are using either of these uh, progress indicators, then we have to uh, kind of uh, make sure that we are using only one type of it. So, either we are using the linear or we are using the circular. So, one should not mix uh, and match like somewhere it is linear, somewhere it is circular. So, that will again uh, be very confusing and frustrating for the user and it will not really go with uh, the entire scheme of the uh, website. So, more than frustration it will not just tie the whole work together uh, well, it will look very uh, unpolished and very uh, not very well thought of. The uh, type of meters, some other information is also displayed in that way the meters are. So, uh, like for example, when in our uh, car or bike we see the petrol meter that okay, it is going down or the speedometer that at what speed we are. So, similarly with the help of color and with uh, the help of these pins, we can see uh, that you know where are we on that scale. So, these are like uh, thermometer, volume meter, uh, value meter, gauge meter. So, they are sort of used here to uh, show the progress to the user. Now, uh, accordion is the menu which is composed of uh, vertically stacked headers uh, that reveal uh, more details when uh, they are triggered. So, we can see here that uh, uh, when this uh, we click on this, so it opens up. So, now this arrow uh, has is denoting that we have opened up uh, while the others are closed. If we click on them, then they will also open up and then they will show the employees in maybe uh, Paris or Berlin or Madrid wherever we want to see them. So, uh, now the accordion UI has uh, headers, so which contain the uh, section uh, titles and uh, they are meant to be brief. So, how to keep it uh, you know compact because now this uh, user interface uh, space is like that real estate uh, market where it is very important that how do we categorize this information because we cannot just put everything out there. And we saw earlier also in the previous lecture how we have different type of interfaces like we will have a, a mobile phone or a tablet or a desktop. So, the space that is available to us is very different in each of the uh, modes. So, how do we uh, display the all the functions all the information uh, in a very systematic manner. So, the hierarchy, the, the uh, systematic manner, the grouping everything has to be taken care of at the same time. So, we have to also preserve the space also leave some space so that the user is not just overwhelmed by all these uh, elements uh, all around him. So, uh, so accordion UI is useful in these cases. Now, similarly there are panels 
and uh, uh, panels again we can see that how this plus sign when we click on it. So, it uh, opens up and uh, there is further information that the uh, user can uh, uh, read. Now, uh, switches and radio buttons and check boxes. So, just like you know any physical buttons uh, that we use uh, around us for the radio we tune for for the light switch we turn on off. So, we have several buttons. So, here also we are trying to depict those buttons of course, because they are not uh, cannot be uh, turned on off physically. So, here we have to still provide a visual uh, appearance of the button, so that the user can know that what they are performing. So, here we can see that uh, on off button, so it is just a binary uh, method either it will be on or it will be off and we can see that when it is on how the color also helps in uh, communicating to the user that now it is on it is green, so it is working and whereas, when it is off, so it has uh, so sort of ghosted it is grey in color. Then radio buttons where we can either select 1, 2 or 3 depending on how many options are given to us. So, here if I select uh, 2, then the 1 will become ghosted. So, uh, I will not be able to choose 1 if I go for option number 2. So, only 1 can be selected and whereas, in the check box more than one options can be selected. So, generally when we are signing up for a new website maybe say health website they will uh, or say for example, healthify they will ask that what are you interested in are you interested in weight loss, stamina building, uh, muscle building and several options. So, you do not have to choose one you can choose several options and then they will accordingly they will uh, prepare the plan uh, for the user. So, now you can see that how we have started to associate also when we see a check box we know that we can fill in more options or when we see the radio button we know that we can only select one option. So, uh, so how do we use these where do we use them so that the design language of our uh, work is consistent. So, uh, model uh, uh, windows are these windows that you may have uh, seen uh, sometimes they come up like when we are about to leave a website. So, they will just come up and they will ask are you leaving already or something like that. So, uh, these windows come over the existing uh, window and they uh, sort of overlap and uh, little uh, we can say like a watermark uh, uh, sometimes. So, uh, they come up for some additional information or we can say when uh, we need the users uh, input. So, or with some special uh, offer here or uh, some other information that may not be there in the website. So, they also come up at those certain times when they want the user to take benefit of certain maybe discount or certain scheme or certain new arrival that the user may have missed. Now, uh, text fields we can see here that uh, they are used for smaller inputs like putting in our name our uh, email password and they have certain uh, limitations like if it is uh, say for a name. So, we can use certain symbols here in the password also certain uh, symbols uh, are acceptable or if there are not a special character has not been used number has not been used then it will show an error it will remind the user that you have to use a special character and a number also. So, uh, so there are multi uh, line text fields. So, this is a way which allow the users to enter multiple lines of text and they are uh, useful when users need to provide uh, uh, like longer description or they want to write some comment. Then the second uh, is the password field. So, they are similar to the, the multi line text field, but the uh, entered uh, text that we enter it is masked either with you know some of these stars or these dots. So, that it is not visible to the other person. Then we have the numeric field, where if we uh, try to add some alphabet. So, it may show an error it will say that uh, this uh, uh, is not allowed or wrong character. Then we have date and time 
uh, time field. So, they uh, allow the user to put in the date and time, uh, if they want the parcel to be delivered at a certain time, certain day or return they have to do. Then next is our search fields. So, if there is certain query that I have as a user, so how can I search for it? Maybe there will be this uh, symbol somewhere. So, I will I know that I can search it will expand and then I can type in there and uh, file upload. So, when we want to upload some file from our uh, uh, computer, so it uh, a button appears we have to press it then it shows uh, that how the file is being uploaded and it's uh, it shares that the file is uploaded. So, these are some of the ways in which we enter the text and finally, the date picker. So, now there are uh, again several ways in which the uh, date can be picked. So, there is a, a drop down date picker wherein we have these uh, uh, date, month and year. So, we so this uh, drops down when we want to uh, enter the date. So, we can scroll through the years and select the right date for our birth for example. Then we have the calendar pickup like it is shown here where the calendar opens up and then we can select we can uh, go left or right depending on which year we are looking for uh, the month and then we can select the date for example. So, uh, then we have the uh, range uh, date picker. So, here they allow us to pick a range. So, for example, we are booking a ticket for our flight, then it shows us both the month's calendars side by side. So, now if I am selecting this as my uh, outbound uh, flight, then I can also select that when is it I want to return back. So, these are some ways in which the uh, date can be selected. So, uh, choosing the uh, right date picker is also important because uh, uh, again the design language of our website or application has to be consistent. So, we have to uh, see the color combinations, the font style, the font size, the hierarchy, the placement, the how to identify, where to find. So, all of those things will create that visual language which will appeal to the user. And it will also make it very easy for the user to uh, identify uh, the task that he wants to perform and also uh, will enable him to become a loyal customer of uh, the particular uh, business. So, with this uh, we will stop here today's lecture and uh, we will uh, meet in the next session. Thank you.